again, as, as Arn spoke to, there's some real efficiencies that we have here um, from, from charging, but also just the fact that this thing is using batteries versus. Talking Joby here today with uh, Travis out of California and rapid takeoff and landing testing. Travis, you've got some very interesting data. What is it all about? Sure, so this is just uh, something to share, um, some rapid takeoff and landing flight testing. This is just from uh, a few weeks ago. And what I just wanted to highlight here um, in the, the picture itself, this is just the actual flight path of all the different flights that we'll talk about here on the right. And these are in Pacific time, but what I wanted to draw attention to is where you see a takeoff, a landing, the duration of the flight, and then how long that they are on the, the ground or in the hangar. Uh, presumably part of that time will be to offload passengers, also for charging, loading luggage, etc. But this testing is quite similar to routes that you would see in New York or presumably in uh, LA for quick five to 10 minute flights. What I wanted to show here, um, they had seven legs within a day. The total flight time was only an hour and 14 minutes. But again, a lot of that time is to assess the aircraft and um, assess what the, the, the flight um, itself uh, is giving via data. Because one thing that we haven't seen um, from Joby, I've seen hour long flights, but where it's very taxing on the aircraft um, is where you turn it on, you turn it off you turn it on, you turn it off. And that's what this is testing here. And when we see minimal time in between, that tells us that the aircraft can handle it. There's no issues when they spin up that, you know, uh, something you have from helicopters, you have to keep them spinning or else if you shut down the engine, some of them require, you know, a five minute cool down time and then you can fire it back up. So again, that slows down service, but also that highlights a lot of other challenges that you have with helicopters versus Joby. Joby, once it lands, they turn off the, the rotor blades, everything stops. When they're ready to take off, they start spinning and take off. Um, you're gonna save a lot of time with maintenance, a lot of time with you know, getting passengers in and out of the aircraft, but just something to highlight here uh, is very exciting for the, these tests. And as you see, it kind of incrementally picked up throughout the day, eight to seven minutes starting out, and then in the afternoon, those flights became, you know, 14 to 15 minutes. And just to confirm, all, all these flights were done with the same aircraft, correct? Correct, this is all one aircraft, same day. Uh, the first flight is, uh, and this is in Pacific time again, um, started at 9.23 in the morning. Uh, and then the last flight uh, landed at uh, 2.04 in the afternoon. So, and these are exact times. Um, as you can see from here in the, the flight visual, the darker the orange uh, is referencing higher speeds and where you see um, kind of these gray areas here, that's when it's I'm taking off, so typically under 40 knots for Joby. Um, after 40 knots is when the rotor blades start to tilt forward and they actually fly on the wing. Um, but the darker the orange here, most of this flight, they're going over 100 knots, um, which is actually really exciting because most of my estimates, I've based it off of 85 knots, um, even in the turns and banking, the Joby uh, aircraft, they don't slow it down, they run at full power. So again, just stressing the aircraft, uh, putting that airframe under you know, the most dynamic force that it's going to um, you know, experience during flights. Uh, and as you can see, real tight formations, you know, no variance to their pattern. Some of these kind of, these oddballs are just where they're uh, coming in to, to slow down um, for some of the landings. But just wanted to share this, I think it's really exciting. Um, this is not you know, just taking a, a picture of the aircraft sitting down on the ground, this is actual flight testing. Um, and you can see, um, even though it looks like a, a small area, this is what is gonna take us to certification. Hence what we saw today, um, they've already completed stage three and now uh, just stage four and stage five to go. And, and to add a bit of context here for our viewers, I mean, when we talk about cost of operations and the advantages, uh, EV tool versus helicopter, um, we have the pilot, obviously, okay, that's like for like, but we've got the fuel, um, but then we've also got the ground services and that's where an EV tool and that's where Joe, we should have a cutting edge uh, versus a uh, helicopter, if I understand correct, Travis. Yes, and if I may, I would love to share a, a slide from the presentation when Joby uh, launched their pilot production facility. They included this slide here to speak about rapid charging. We expect to be able to recharge the aircraft in the time it takes to deplane and load passengers and more than 95% of trips taken today in our target market. So I can make some presumptions there. More than likely they're speaking about JFK. Um, that's the only real like commuter flight um, or something out to the Hamptons from, from Manhattan or from LA to and some of the surrounding areas. And so when we see this, what I have a feeling is 
what they will do is start out a day with a full charge. We know that the aircraft, uh, the range of that aircraft is 100 miles. They're running you know, between 85 to 100 knots, so roughly 100 miles an hour. I believe that's like 160 kilometers. And so anyway, they're going to start the day fully charged. They're going to run a couple of legs of flights, which will be under that flight time. The typical flight's gonna be 20 minutes, let's call it. They're gonna do charges, this rapid charging, in between each of those flights. So they're gonna be topping off the fuel, so to speak, the batteries throughout each flight. And by doing that, they're not going to stop like a typical helicopter after it runs, depending on um, the trips that they're taking, they only take a certain amount of fuel. So in these shorter trips, they may only be able to run, you know, five or, or six, five minute flights. So half an hour, and then they want to refuel because also the fuel has to be taken into account for the weight and balance of the aircraft. Joby won't have that issue. The, the weight and balance will just be the passengers. It won't be anything with fuel. And that is a huge, huge factor. Um, helicopters become very unsafe if the weight and balance is off, and that could be simply just having too much or too little fuel, having nothing to do with running out of that gas just based off of the weight and balance of the aircraft as it flies. And I mean, if you look at uh, charging with an EV, you have the, if I look at my EV, charging from 20 to 80% takes just as long as charging from 80 to 100%. So obviously, ideally, you want to stay in that 20 to 80% charge range. Yeah, and weight is not an issue here, so you can charge every time. Don't need to worry about load balancing. Um, that's a very uh, smart detail, Travis. So that was just something to, again, to highlight as we get closer to certification, some of these routes. What does it look like? How many can we actually do in a day? Well, we've already seen, you know, again, from the flights as I just showed, they've done seven flights in one day. Not impressive for now. Um, impressive, but that's not going to, to get us to where we want to go in terms of full commercial service. But this will be a crucial factor, um, just doing the rapid charging in between. Travis, do you perhaps have insights on how long it normally takes for an aircraft that's going through these FFA certifications to go from these limited flights, like seven flights a day, to a full commercial uh, setting? So in terms of flights per day, uh, there's actually some really interesting rules from the FAA. Um, it's actually based less off of the aircraft itself but where you're landing. So at an airport, if you're, you know, if you're landing at a, a certified airport, um, you can come and go as, as much as you please. Um, the drawback to that operationally is you do pay landing fees every time that the aircraft lands. The only time that that doesn't uh, typically take place is whatever your home uh, base or, or uh, airport, then they don't, they don't charge you there. But that would be the, the real limitation. Uh, if you do start to have off um, site landing. So if you want to land in somebody's backyard or there's a stadium and you want to land in the parking lot, for instance, um, those typically only allow for 10 uh, takeoff or landings. So a takeoff and a landing is technically uh, two operations. So you can only do five in a day. Now, I think that is a small, small portion of what Joby would plan to do, especially as they launch service, um, given that they'll be operating you know, typically um, in and out of airports with Delta. So I don't think our limitation will be necessarily on the aircraft itself. Um, it, it will be more on, you know, in and out of, uh, in and out of those airports. And, and just for reference, you know, Joby did put that um, they've already tested their batteries to last for 10,000 cycles. So this is uh, pretty impressive. And, you know, if you're looking at a helicopter, if you ran that many cycles on the engine, you'd have to replace the engine or a, a large overhaul of it. With Joby, in theory, that's just the batteries. So they're gonna pop out the batteries, pop in new ones, and there you go. Um, so I, I think that, again, as, as Arn spoke to, there's some real efficiencies that we have here um, from, from charging, but also just the fact that this thing is using batteries versus um, in a typical jet fuel. I think it's also fair to say that the batteries will be swapped quite quickly because it's all about uh, the load cycle and maximum capacity versus weight. Um, so these uh, batteries will then go into uh, secondary markets like solar energy storage. So there's definitely going to be uh, some kind of cycle around this. Uh, with the batteries uh, being swapped as, uh, as soon as possible in order to uh, ensure maximum performance. 